There's a common misconception about the roll of your wrist when you hit a forehand. You see a lot of people out there saying, well, as you swing up to the tennis ball and hit, you need to snap your wrist because that adds topspin power, whatever. Well, that's not the case. Your wrist should be passive when you hit a forehand. In other words, once you set into your hitting arm position, which we discussed in a separate video in this section, the wrist and more generally the rest of your arm and your racket, that relationship shouldn't change. So it's going to stay the same as you swing up to contact and into your follow through. Now, to illustrate this point, we're going to look at Frank Salazar on the FYB TV screen. And once he sets into his hitting arm position, which he's done right here, his wrist position isn't going to change. So he swings up, he hits, and then if we freeze it here in his follow through, wrist is still in the same position. The relationship between his wrist, arm, racket hasn't changed. It will release if we continue to play this as he follows through, but again, that's well after the ball is off the strings. For comparison's sake, let's look at a windshield wiper forehand. This is Oliver Ackley hitting a windshield wiper. And once he sets into his hitting arm position, he's going to swing up, make contact, and then if we freeze it into his follow through, wrist, forearm, racket, all still in the same relationship, so again, his wrist hasn't changed. He hasn't used it to slap the ball, whatever. The wrist is passive. Now, if you see your wrist recoiling at contact or anything else, that's just a function of making contact with the tennis ball, but again, he's not trying to do something actively with his wrist. Now, the final point I want to make is that there's a difference between what your wrist is doing and pronation when you hit a forehand. Somebody like Federer or Nadal will pronate to add topspin to their forehand but pronation is your forearm and your wrist turning over as a piece. So that's different than using your wrist when you hit a forehand. And that's an important concept to understand because when you watch Federer's forehand or Nadal's forehand at full speed, the shot can look pretty whippy. So it's easy to understand why there's some misconception about what's going on exactly with your wrist when you hit a forehand. But again, just to reiterate, wrist is passive when you hit. Set your arm racket into the hitting arm position, that stays the same up to contact, through contact, and then a little bit into the follow through. I want to make one final point about pronation as you swing up and hit the tennis ball. Pronating when you hit a forehand is probably something you do not want to try to do. Unless you have a very high level forehand, it's not something you should be focusing on because it'll cause more problems than it will solve. Let's go back to Oliver Ackley's forehand, his windshield wiper forehand. Now, once he sets into the hitting arm position, he is not going to pronate as he swings up to the tennis ball, and you can see that here. If we freeze it at contact, he has not pronated. Now, Oliver is the former number one player from Togo. This forehand he hit, he absolutely destroyed. I fed the ball, I had to duck to get out of the way. It was ridiculous. So, if you want to hit a forehand like Oliver, you do not need to pronate. And again, there are a million other things you should be working on as you build your forehand up. It's good to know that pronation is a possibility, but it's really only a possibility if you can do all the various other things that are required to build a world-class forehand like Oliver. So, like I said, it's good to have in the back of your mind. You probably shouldn't focus on it. It's not necessary to absolutely destroy the ball and have a money forehand.